Greetings in the name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. This is your Apostle Reddick with Converting Souls Apostolic Ministry. This morning, before I go into the spirits of the Bible, I have presentations to make for two young ladies who have finished the evangelistic teaching class. We have now an ordained evangelist, evangelist Shanice Reed with Converting Souls Apostolic Ministries. Can you see your ordination papers? Shanice? Yes, I can see them. Okay, it says, Certificate of Ordination. We the undersigned upon the recommendation and request of the Converting Souls International Ministries, which was our old name, Converting Souls Apostolic Ministries, Church at 705 Thurman Street, Camden, New Jersey, 08104, which had full and sufficient opportunity for judging the God-given gifts, Christian experience, called to the ministry, and views of Bible doctrine, hereby certify that evangelist Shanice D. Reed was solemnly and publicly set apart and ordained to the work of the gospel ministry by authority and order of the Converting Souls Apostolic Ministries Church um, this 16th day of October 2022. So that is one presentation. Co yes, Evangelist Reed? Thank you. And I will be mailing these out tomorrow to you since you are in Virginia at the moment. And for um, Prophetic Evangelist Sierra Broadway, this too is your Certificate of Ordination for passing the Evangelistic Teaching Class. Now, we will be having a separate ceremony but this is your certificate of ordination and it's called a solemnization or a robing where you will receive um, um, the laying on of hands so your certificate reads just like hers and but it has prophetic evangelist Sierra Broadway and so those are the two presentations we have and of course this is an online ministry I am in a different state than they are and we will be holding a different service and I will um, record to show you actually what the robing service or the solemnization is okay now we're going to go straight into the teaching of the spirits of the Bible let us pray We are going into the spirits of the Bible. These are the heavenly hosts, God's messengers, the angels of heaven. Heavenly Father, I just thank you for your word. I thank you for this time of teaching on your holy word, the spirits of the Bible. These particular spirits, Father, you have taught me that they are of you even though all spirits are from you, that these stay with you and move by your command. 
So, Father, I pray that you would open up the eyes and ears of the hearer. Touch every heart and mind in the name of Jesus and be glorified. Be glorified. Holy Spirit, I yield myself to you and none other. Father, and as I, I teach this lesson, I pray. I bind up every spirit that is not like you right now in the name of Jesus. Not only in my life as I'm teaching, but in the lives of those that are hearing. Let it fall on good ground and give them an understanding. Holy Spirit, have your way in Jesus Christ's name. Amen and amen. Genesis, the 48th chapter. We're talking about angels today. Angels. Angels. Genesis 48, the 16th verse. Now, we understand that if you've ever been taught on angels, you see them as messengers. But I'm going to show you today three angels that I learned about that are the deity in our lives. Here we have verse 6. Let's start off at verse 15. And he blessed Joseph and said, God, before whom my fathers Abraham and Isaac did walk, the God which fed me all my life long unto this day, the angel which redeemed me from all evil, bless the lads and let my name be named on them and the name of my fathers Abraham and Isaac and let them grow into a multitude in the midst of the earth. Here we have Israel whose former name was Jacob. He is blessing Joseph and he laid his hands on his sons. But he said the angel which redeemed who is the angel which redeems? This particular angel is speaking of God Almighty himself. Jehovah, Yahweh, Elohim is his name. He is the creator and maker with our Lord Jesus who redeems. I want you to turn with me to the 31st chapter. of Genesis and I'm going to show you that this was God himself coming to visit Jacob God as an angel you know, it's interesting to understand the God that you serve. I understand my God will bend heaven to come to speak to me, to come to see what is happening with me, to visit me in communion and in fellowship. My God will do this. My God visited Israel. He visited Jacob. He visited Abraham. He visited Isaac. And he visits us today. Genesis, the 31st chapter, we're going to start at the 11th verse. And he said, And the angel of God spake unto me in a dream, saying, Jacob, and I said, Here am I. And he said, Lift up now thine eyes and see all the rams which leap upon the cattle are ring streaked, speckled, and grizzled. For I have seen all that Laban hath done unto thee. 
In verse 13, here's the connection. I am the God of Bethel. And see, in my Bible, when it speaks of the Almighty, God is capitalized. He's not talking about one of the other gods in the Bible that I have taught you on in time past. But here he's saying, I am the God of Bethel. So this first angel we understand is our God. Our God. He says, I am the God of Bethel, where thou anointest the pillar, and where thou vowest a vow unto me. Now arise, get thee out from the land, and return unto the land of thy kindred. God came himself as the messenger. And so we must understand God comes as an angel. He will deliver his own message if he have to. He, this, knowing the God you serve, our God, not only do he protect us, he wants to speak face to face with us. And I've shared with you scriptures in time past that he want to meet with you and teach you himself. Now, that's a class I teach my people. And so you've got to understand that you serve a mighty God. His name is El Roy. He sits in heaven. Yes, he sits high. He looked down in the earth. But when the earth begin to cry out, when we as his people begin to cry out, he don't just sit up there and look down at us. He sends a messenger. And you've got to know that sometimes he will come himself. This is the God you serve. Exodus, the 23rd chapter. I can't stay on God as an angel right now because there are so many angels here. But I want you to understand who your God is and what he does. Exodus, the 23rd chapter. I have to show you another holy God that you serve. And his name is Jesus. He is the Christ, the anointed one. In the Old Testament, he's called the Holy One of Israel. And we must understand that he is also an angel he was sent by god so in the new testament he's called the first apostle and high priest of our profession exodus 23 he says Verse 20 to 23, chapter 23, verse 20. Behold, I sent an angel. Now, see, he ain't talking about just any angel here. This is a capital A. This is where you begin to learn when it's your deity, when it's Jesus Christ, when it's God Almighty, and when it's the Holy Spirit. It is a capital A. So he's letting us know right now that I'm not just any old angel. I see, I send an angel before thee to keep thee in the way and to bring thee into a place which I have prepared. He says, listen. This is God telling you I'm sending you Christ 
to keep you in the way. He says, into a place that I have prepared. He says, beware of him though, and obey his voice. Provoke him not, for he will not pardon your transgressions, for my name is in him. That's only if you provoke him. And we get a deeper understanding by Christ, the angel himself in the New Testament. The only transgression he will not pardon is blasphemy against the Holy Ghost. He says, but if thou shalt indeed obey his voice and do all that I speak, then I will be an enemy unto thine enemies and an adversary unto thine adversaries. You want these holy gods on your side. This is the angel. This is Christ. He prepares the way and he keeps you in the way. He is called the angel of God or the angel of Jehovah. More than a prophet. He shows you more than what God wants to say to you. Uh, he opened the doorway that you can commune with him yourself. Um, he brought you back into fellowship with the Almighty, uh, with his Father in heaven. Exodus, the 14th chapter. The 18th verse. And he said, And the Egyptians shall know that I am the Lord when I have gotten me honor upon Pharaoh, upon his chariots, and upon his horsemen. And the angel of God, which went before the camp of Israel, removed and went behind them and the pillar of the cloud went from before their face and stood behind them and it came between the camp of the Egyptians and the camp of Israel and it was a cloud and darkness to them now what God can do this to those that was behind the cloud it was a darkness so they couldn't see. But to the children of Israel, to those that believed in his name, it gave light in the darkness. And they were able to see their way. And not one came near them all night. The angel of the Lord. Don't you know in the association of God and Jesus Christ with the clouds? He says, I want you to understand Anytime Jesus is represented by a cloud, it's usually white. So therefore, you see the glory cloud, the brightness of the day. But anytime it's God Almighty, he describes coming in a cloud that's gray. Or dark cloud as a cover. But he rides the clouds by his name Yah. So I want you to understand. You might say J-A-H. His name is Yah. And we find. 
Hallowed his name in a word that we say, giving him praise. When we say praise God, and the people begin to lift their hands and say, Hallelujah, Hallelujah. We are saying, Praise God, praise God, praise God, praise God. Hallelujah, Hallelujah. Now I know in the book of Psalms the spelling says J A H, but the pronunciation in Hebrew, uh, the J is a Y, so it's Yah, and that is the proper pronunciation. Praise Yah, praise Yah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Now, we just learned as God as an angel. We just learned our Christ, Jesus, the Holy One of Israel, as an angel. Now, let's get down to the final deity in the Christian faith, the Holy Spirit. Let's go to Isaiah, the 63rd chapter. This is, a, this is the Holy Spirit, the Spirit of the living God. In the Old Testament, what he would do with the prophets is take his spirit. And Ezekiel and Isaiah and Jeremiah, he, they would be caught up in the spirit or taken up by his spirit. So we must understand that the angel of his presence, we find him in the Old Testament in the prophetical book, in the prophet book of Isaiah 63. Isaiah 63, the book of the prophets. This is one of the major prophets. Isaiah 63 verse 9 in all their affliction he was afflicted and the angel of his presence their affliction he was afflicted and the angel of his presence saved them I want to go back up a little bit the word savior is capturing me my attention in verse 8 but I want to go to verse 7 he says I will mention the loving kindness of the Lord and the praises of the Lord according to all that the Lord hath bestowed on us. And the great goodness towards the house of Israel. Which he hath bestowed on them according to his mercies. And according to the multitude of his loving kindnesses. For he said surely they are my people. Children that will not lie. So he was their savior. In all their afflictions, he was afflicted. Understand that your Savior, the Holy One of Israel, and God himself, we know him to be our Savior as well. But this Jesus Christ, he said, in all their afflictions, he was afflicted. Every pain you go through, uh, Jesus is feeling it. Um, 
everything he went through, even the death of the cross and the resurrection was because of the affliction that we go through. And there is a baptism that we share called the baptism of suffering. Just like when he was in heaven, the I Isaiah the prophet is telling us uh, that the Savior was afflicted while we are while they were being afflicted before he came to the earth. He shared in their suffering. He says, but the angel of his presence, um, this is the Holy Spirit. The angel of his presence saved them. In his love and in his pity, he redeemed them. Don't you know God released the angel of his presence today? Each and every one of us is just not on his prophets anymore. You as a believer can obtain the angel of his presence. He released to all of us that believe in his son Jesus Christ. He calls him Savior. And if you believe in the Savior, you understand that you have access to the angel of his presence. You have access to the spirit of the living God in whom you serve. You have access. He says, and he bare them and carried them all the days of old, but they rebelled. The house of Israel rebelled. Don't you rebel today. God wants to give you the angel of his presence. And they vexed his Holy Spirit. I want you to understand this. Therefore, he was turned to be their enemy and he fought against them. You don't want God fighting against you. Here it is, verse 11. Then he remembered the days of old. Moses and his people saying, Where is he that brought them up out of the sea with the shepherd of his flock? Where is he that put his Holy Spirit within him? He, they are looking. For the God of Moses in their affliction. But God had to fight against them because they vexed his Holy Spirit. Did I not just tell you that Jesus in the New Testament, he told us that the only sin he will not forgive, the trespass, is the blasphemy against the Holy Spirit. And as believers, we don't want to follow that pattern. Do you know today how you vex the Spirit of God, the angel of His presence that is in the earth today, in you that are converted and are baptized in the Holy Spirit, the spiritual baptism of God, where he empowers your spirit he enters you and becomes one with you i want you to understand the only way you can vex the holy spirit if you've been baptized or if you believe in jesus christ is that you sin sin is the only thing that vex his spirit when you sin you're rejecting his guidance, his leadership. I want you to understand the angel of his presence, the Holy Spirit of God. He's a spirit of the Bible. In his name, Spirit of God. He is the angel, the spirit of his presence. He says, where, they're looking for God Almighty. He says, where is he that put his Holy Spirit within Moses? But this is what we ask when we're in sin. 
and we can't feel his presence. God, where are you? But there's another time we ask God, where are you? Well, we've done nothing wrong. And God has allowed the enemy to attack our lives. Not because we did anything wrong, but because sometimes Satan go before God in heaven and God has to call out your name and say, have you considered my servant? Or God, like Christ, has an assignment for you that causes the hour and the power of darkness to come into your life. You must understand that even if you die, that is a victory. When you stand before the holy God, the angels of our deity, God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Ghost, the Holy Spirit, um, the angel of God's presence. Now I started off with these three angels. Why? Because we must understand that as people of God and we begin to grow in him and be perfected by his spirit uh, we become sons of God and I want you to know as you are maturing as a son of God uh, you are maturing as an angel he calls the angels of heaven sons of God Job, the first chapter. Let's go to Job. Job the first chapter. The sixth verse. You know, Job went through a lot. Before we get to the sixth verse, I want you to understand something about what Job was thinking. There was a messenger that came to Job. And he said he had seven sons and three daughters. And in verse 5 he says, And it was so when the days of their feasting were gone about, that Job sent and sanctified them, and rose up early in the morning, and offered burnt offerings according to the number of them all. For Job said, It may be that my sons have sinned and cursed God in their hearts. Thus did Job continually. He continually offered up sacrifices of prayers and, and, for his, and burnt offerings for his kids. So when you have a wayward son or daughter, you got to pray for them. You don't know how they think about your God. Even though they don't know him. What are they saying in their heart? Verse 6. Now there was a day when the sons of God came to present themselves before the Lord. And Satan. Came also among them. Do you know that Satan is the former angel Lucifer who was a cherubim that walked on God's holy mountain in the second heaven. He walked on the coals of fire in heaven before he was cast out by Michael the archangel. And his name Satan means adversary. So we understand that he became God's adversary. And the Lord said unto Satan, Where comest thou? Then Satan answered the Lord and said, From going to and fro in the earth, 
and from walking up and down in it. And the Lord said unto Satan, Has thou considered my servant Job, that there is none like him in the earth, a, a perfect and an upright man, one that feareth God and excuseth evil? And here we have, here we find that the angels of heaven are called the sons of God. Verse 6. He says, now there was a day when the sons of God came to present themselves and his adversary came among them. But see, as a believer, even as Job, God testified to Satan on his behalf. And God will testify to Satan on your behalf. He will point things out to Satan that... <laughs> He don't want to hear. Let's go to Job 2 verse 1. And there was a day when the sons of God came to present themselves before the Lord. And Satan came also among them to present himself before the Lord. And again the Lord said unto Satan, From where, come, where are you coming from? And Satan answered the Lord and said, from going to and fro in the earth and from walking up and down in it. And again he said unto Satan, Hast thou considered my servant Job? For there is none like him in the earth, a perfect and an upright man, one that feareth God and hates evil. You want God to testify on your behalf. You got to hate evil. He says, you've got to fear me and hate evil. You've got to reverence me and hate evil. The sons of God are the angels in heaven that present themselves before God. The sons of God. So we have God as an angel. Christ as an angel. And the Holy Spirit as an angel. Now we're talking about the other angels. This is where we're going to get into what angels are called. So we have the sons of God. Let's go to Daniel the fourth chapter. Now, our deity, God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Ghost. The rest of the angels are not called those names. They are his army of angels, his messengers in the earth. And he calls them sons at times. Daniel, the fourth chapter. Now he calls them holy ones. He says, I saw in the visions of my head upon my bed. And behold, a watcher and a holy one came down from heaven. And he cried aloud and said thus, Hew down the tree and cut off his branches. Shake off his leaves and scatter his fruit. Let the beast get away from under it and the fowls from his branches. And he goes on to speak. Let's go to verse 17. And then this matter is by the decree of the watchers. I want you to understand in these verses, they're called watchers and holy ones. The angels in heaven. These particular angels are messengers. And they're guardians of you and me. I want you to understand that. He says, the matter is by the decree of the watchers and the demand by the word of the holy ones. To the intent that the living may know that the most high ruleth in the kingdom of men. 
He wanted them to understand, this is Daniel, in his day, that the Most High, this is the first angel I talked about, God as an angel, the Most High. And he ruleth in the kingdom of men, and giveth it to whomsoever he will, and setteth up over it the basis of men. And this was him in the life of King Nebuchadnezzar. King Nebuchadnezzar, he had to show who is God. Let's go to verse 23. And whereas the king saw a watcher and a holy one coming down from heaven, the king was having a prophetic dream. And he said, I see these angels coming down from heaven and saying, hew the tree down and destroy it. They are messengers of God. They bring forth the word of the Most High. Hew the tree down and destroy it, yet leave the stump of the roots thereof in the earth, even with a band of iron and brass and the tender grass of the field, and let it be wet with the dew of heaven, and let his portion be with the beast of the field till seven times pass over i want you to know the names of angels you've got to recognize them and so here we have god as an angel christ as an angel the holy ghost as an angel now we get to the lower level angels and we see they're called the sons of god the holy ones the watchers Go with me to Psalms 103 verse 20 bless the lord ye his angels that excel in strength and do his commandments hearkening unto the voice of his word bless ye the lord all ye his hosts okay this is where we call them heavenly hosts host of heaven here the psalmist david it's letting us know that they are called hosts in heaven. These angels, ye ministers of his that do his pleasure. So they're watchers, they're guardians, and they're hosts of heaven. Or would I say heavenly hosts? And here he's saying they're ministers of his. Let's go to Psalms 103, verse, no. Let's go to Let's go to Hebrews. Hebrews, the first chapter. Verse 7, and of the angels, okay, let's go to verse 6. And again, when he bringeth in the first begotten into the world, he said, and let all the angels of God worship him. And of the angels, he said, who maketh his angels spirits. God makes his angels of heaven spirits. And his ministers a flame of fire. So you have angels in heaven that are spirits, but then he sends some to minister. And they are a flame of fire. Verse 14. He says, but are they not all ministering spirits? 
They are all ministering spirits sent forth to minister for them who shall be the heirs of salvation. They minister to you and me, uh, even to those unbelievers who are supposed to be heirs of salvation. That means they are supposed to come into the sheepfold. They are supposed to come into the kingdom of God. They are supposed to serve the holy God. These angels minister to us. And not only do they minister to us, they guard us. Not only do they guard us, they are the sons of God. Not only are they the sons of God, they are his heavenly hosts. We got to know the angels. Let's talk more about these hosts. 1 Kings 22. 1 Kings 22. Verse 19, Hear thou therefore the word of the Lord. I saw the Lord sitting on his throne, and all the hosts of heaven standing by him on his right hand and on his left. On his right hand and his left, there are angels in heaven, the hosts of heaven. Now we understand the host means angels. They are the celestial illuminaires. What is a celestial illuminaire? I understand it's an angel, and I understand their hosts. Um, they're spirits that give off light. They minister. The celestial illuminaires. They give off light. Let's go to Luke, the second chapter. The 13th verse. Actually, no, I, I might as well read it. This, remember Isaiah was saying. In 63, the Savior... He giveth the Savior. Verse 8. And there were in the same country shepherds abiding in the fields, keeping watch over their flock by night. And lo, the angel of the Lord came upon them, and the glory of the Lord shone right about them. This angel was in God's presence. He was the celestial illuminaire. The light was giving off. The glory of God was surrounding. And they were afraid. But we find that when any human see a real angel of God, fear come upon them. And the angel said unto them, Fear not. For behold, I bring you good tidings of great joy. Here is one of the messengers. He said, I got a message to you. I'm going to minister to you. Why? Because you're supposed to be an heir of salvation. Are you listening today? Christ is speaking. The thunderings of God are going forth. Those that are listening, are you supposed to be an heir? He's got an angel speaking to you today. Are you ready to be an heir of salvation? And the angel said unto them, Fear not, for behold, I bring you good tidings of great joy, which shall be to all people. For unto you is born this day in the city of David a Savior which is Christ the Lord. 
the Messiah is born. The angel of the Lord, the angel of Jehovah is born. The Savior, which is Christ the Lord. And this shall be a sign unto you. You shall find the babe wrapped in swaddling clothes, uh, lying in a manger. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly hosts. Uh, with the angel suddenly there was a multitude. A multitude came down to see the Lord birth into the earth. Uh, you've got to understand the heavenly host praising God and saying glory to God in the highest and on earth peace goodwill towards men the messengers the heir to those that are heirs of salvation can you hear him today And it came to pass as the angels were gone away from them into heaven. The shepherds said one to another. Let us now go even unto Bethlehem. And see this thing which has come to pass. Which the Lord had made known unto us. Um, the angels came down from heaven. He said that there were angels of a multitude from heaven. That means there were so many he couldn't even count them. All he could describe them as, as a multitude. And then here it is. They are the celestial illuminators. They are innumerable. Let's go to Hebrews, the 12th chapter. Hebrews 12, 21. But you are come unto Mount Zion and unto the city of the living God, the heavenly Jerusalem, to an innumerable company of angels, to the general assembly in the church of the firstborn. That's us. When, which are written in heaven and to the God, the judge of all, and to the spirits of just men made perfect. That's the apostles and the bishops, the matured sons, the spirits of just men made perfect. Mm, that's why we're called to the believers. Our job is to perfect the saints. And to Jesus, the mediator of the new covenant, uh, the new testament, and to the blood of sprinkling that speaketh better than that of Abel. Christ's blood is speaking. He said, now is the time. Are you ready to be an heir of salvation? The heavenly host. The numeral number, the celestial illuminators. Jesus is leading, and he said, Now is the time. Do you hear the word of the Lord? The angel of the church of converting souls is speaking. Just as he said in the book of Revelation. The angel of the church of Laodicea, the angel of the church of Philadelphia, the city of love. Can you hear the love of God today? I want you to understand that the angel of God is speaking and the Holy Ghost, the angel of his presence is coming through. God is thundering and he's saying, and the blood is sprinkling. Are you ready to be an heir? Are you ready to be an heir? Are you ready to be an heir of salvation? 
Are you ready to cross over from being an enemy to a friend? Um, are you ready for me to embrace you? Um, this is the God of salvation, uh, the God of Israel, the God of Isaac, uh, the God of Abraham. Jehovah is his name. Yahweh is his name. Yah is his name. He is the God of peace, Jehovah Shalom. He is the God who sees you, uh, the God of A. Hagar. His name is El Roy. The God who sees me. That's what she called him. Are you ready? He says, now is the day for you to be an heir of salvation. Are you ready to call on him? Through Jesus Christ, his son. Spoken of in the Old Testament. Brought in in the new covenant. For you and me. And those that are going to be heirs of salvation. The Holy Spirit bearing witness. That's why I'm able to preach to the testimony of the death, burial, and resurrection of our Lord. That's why I'm able to come in communion with our God. Uh, that's why our God embraces us by the angel of his presence. Why don't you let him convert you today? Call on God. Fill me with your spirit, Lord. Fill me with the angel of your presence. Embrace me, Lord. I lift my hands to you today. Father, we just thank you for this time of fellowship with you. We thank you for this time of you speaking to us. We thank you and we embrace that you desire to teach us your ways. You desire to show us who you are. And you tell us if we seek you, we will find you when we search for you with all our hearts. And you will embrace us. You will protect us. You will empower us. And you will deliver us. And we thank you this day, God. We thank you that we are heirs of salvation. And we thank you of who you're going to bring in yes. to the sheepfold. That they can call on your name. And that... When they cry, you see them, um, and they go, and you got to break open heaven to come down and see who is this that is crying, uh, which child of mine, um, which angel of mine need my help. Um, I am the God that sees you, Thank you Jesus. and I do respond. Thank you, Thank you. I am the God. That gives you peace. Yes. Thank you. Thank you. I am the God you. of your presence. Thank you. I am the God, and beside me there is none other. Thank you. The God of all gods. Father, have your way in the lives of your people and all of us, Lord. Continue to teach us and show us who you are and remind us, God, that we need not fear those that are equal to us. Um, we need not fear flesh and blood, um, but we need to fear the one that can destroy both flesh and blood and spirit and soul in hell. And the one that can deliver us to a second death. Have your way, God. 
and be glorified in your people. Continue to guide us by the angel of your presence, your Holy Spirit. Uh, we won't vex and we'll try not to, God. Um, and then if we do, we will get on our knees and repent and say, Lord, forgive me. Holy Spirit, forgive me. God, forgive me for vexing the angel of your presence. Yes, Lord. And I ask you that now, God, to sprinkle us in the blood of Christ forgiving us for vexing the holy spirit uh, and continue to perfect us um, that we will get to that place in you uh, where we can look back and say god you sanctified me god you delivered me thank you for the angel of your presence I don't vex him like I used to, Lord. I'm learning, God. I'm trusting you, Lord. I see you face to face, God. As we go from glory to glory, continue to perfect us, to bring us to that place in you, God, that we won't vex the angel of your presence. Have your way, Lord, in Jesus Christ's name the potentate king, the everlasting father, the holy one of Israel, the king of kings and lord of lords, we say amen and amen. amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. 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 Thank you, Hallelujah. Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Glory, Glory to 